You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold, stop it. That wasn't a skit, my friends. You just watched Oklahoma Senator Mark Wayne Mullen literally challenge Teamsters President Sean O'Brien to a fight during a Senate Help Committee hearing. Now, if you're wondering how it got to that point, well, it's because of tweets, specifically mean tweets that Sean O'Brien made after their last confrontation that hurt Mark Wayne Mullen's feelings. But before we get to that, let's watch the full exchange. Here the last time, <laughs> him and I kind of had a back and forth. I uh, appreciate your demeanor today. It's quite different. But after you left here, you got pretty excited about the keyboard. In fact, you tweeted at me one, two, three, four, five times and let me read what the last one said um said greedy ceo who pretends like he's self-made sorry i wish he was in the truck with me when i was building my plumbing company myself and my wife was running the office because i sure remember working pretty hard in long hours pretends like he's self-made what a clown fraud always has been always will be quick the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me, any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Big oh, hold, stop it. Is that your right. solution? Every poll. Oh. No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, okay. you're a United States senator. Sit down. Active. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Chairman. it. Hold it. If Hold we can, no, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is Hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this is a hearing. And God knows the American people have enough of contempt for Congress. Let's not I don't make like it worse. Thugs and you, bullies. You have, and that's you have I don't like you because you Hold just described yourself. Hold it. You have the mic. Yeah. You have time. Amazing. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but when Mark Wayne Mullen was reading Sean O'Brien's tweets, he left out the best part. So you can see it printed out in full color here. But if you go to the actual tweet from O'Brien, he added a picture of Mullen standing on a platform during a debate to make himself seem taller with the hashtag little man syndrome. Now, that's in part why I think Mark Wayne Mullen was so mad. It seems like Sean O'Brien hit a bit of a nerve. And uh, listen, we love our short kings, but Mark Wayne Mullen is not a short king. He's a short cunt. And if you're clearly self-conscious about your height and you go out of your way to overcompensate by standing on platforms and trying to make yourself seem like a big tough guy, people are going to point that out and make fun of you for it. You're making yourself a target, Mark or Mark Wayne or whatever your stupid fucking name is. But let's watch some more from that exchange because it took Bernie Sanders a long time to actually regain order. All right, just statement. Then let's do this because I did challenge you and I accepted your challenge, and you went quiet. No, I didn't go quiet. I was. No, I was. No, no, you no, challenged no. me to a cage match, no, no, acting no, no. like a twelve-year-old schoolyard hold bully. Excuse me. Hold, hold it. No, excuse me. I, have I the will mic. say. I will say exactly. Senator what Mullen, said. I have the mic. You have questions on any economic issues, anything that's said, go for it. We're not here to talk about physical abuse. You brought. We're not talking in. about. Of course, and, I did. and let me tell you, let me show you his hearing because I want to. I want to expose this thug to who he is. And you're not pointing to me. That's disrespectful. All right. I don't care about respecting you at all. I, respect I don't respect you I respect. at all. So all right, hold let me, it. Let me, let hold me. it. No. You don't want to be of the most hold elite it, people. Act it, please. All right. This is a. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. This is a hearing to discuss economic issues so anytime any place no that's april, not april is a charity event no for, that's not that's no, not no. no it's a he no, we, sir he said it and this is he is time. here you to set no. parameters on what the questions can or cannot be asked and i'll ask no you're you not going to we're not going to be talking about we, we physical union. confrontation oh this is about charity for a union charity because this, this is, is firefighters and you people. have a question april, on his test april grow april, up april, will you please you have a question on his let's not be said it you're an embarrassment Embarrassment. You said it, and I'm just simply answering it. You Senator Mullen, no, hold it, body. hold it. I, Senator Mullen, you made some charges. Charges? Mr. Mr. O'Brien, do you want to respond to the question? Yeah, go ahead, questions? please. Yeah, I mean, look, the reality of it is, you Except know, my challenge, Mr. Tough Mr. Guy. Mullen, <laughs> tough guy. Answer, yeah. hold it. Answer the questions. All right, you all want, if I, he, he made a lot of statements, right? Okay. And his statements are fiction. 
at best. Fiction, I read them. Can you hear me? What? I'll answer the question, please. I can't understand him, to be honest with you. All right. He rambles so much. What was your question, actually? Except my, well, you said I made a lot of statements. No, but what's your question? I don't understand your question. Could you repeat it? You said any time, any place. What's your question? Accept the challenge. What challenge? You said any time, any place. I'm accepting yours, so why don't you come What back? challenge? What challenge are you talking April about? April 30th. How about we do it for a charity at the Smoking Guns in Tulsa, Oklahoma? No, we're, we're not going to be what talking about challenge? physical talking confrontations about? here. You want to fight me? What do you say by any time, any place? Let's have coffee. Discuss our differences. Oh, oh that's what you said. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. All right, well, let's say I don't have coffee. Let's I'd do it. All right. I'd love to. But the, it's funny how you're back Okay. Well, I don't back on anything. You did. The uh, other one. You're a 100. Senator. Uh, should be the most influential people in this country making changes. Senator you're Hassan focused on. Okay. Why, you're focused you. on why debate that's not even relevant. You're an embarrassment. You're an embarrassment. Look. An embarrassment to the state of This hearing is about the condition of the working class in America. You That's why we're talking. You're the biggest thug here. You brought, you brought him in. All right, you're you're being, the biggest thug. Even look, your colleagues know, call you. Why you do what you're doing, Senator Hassan? What a complete shit show. Listen, if I were Bernie Sanders in this situation, here's what I would do. I would just let them fight. If Mark Wayne Mullen wants to challenge this union boss to a duel and potentially get his ass beat, I would have no choice but to allow it. Now, the question is, what happened during their last exchange, which was referenced, that actually led to those tweets from Sean O'Brien that triggered Mark Wayne Mullen so thoroughly? Well, here's their exchange from the original hearing that took place in March. And as you're going to see, Mark Wayne Mullen was once again the instigator of that confrontation. I started with nothing. Absolutely nothing. In fact, I started below nothing. And I started growing this little plumbing company with six employees to now we have over 300 employees. And back in 2009, you guys tried to unionize me. My guys were making money. They were getting paid more than the union halls were paying their plumbers. Our benefits were better. But because we started bidding jobs that were union jobs and winning those, Union pipe fitters decided they were going to come after us. They would show up at my house. They'd be leaning up against my trucks. I'm not afraid of a physical confrontation. In fact, sometimes I look forward to it. I'm, that's not my problem. But when you're doing that to my employees, and then when, they, when that didn't work, they started picketing our job site, saying, shame on Mullen. Shame on Mullen. For what? For what? Because we were paying higher wages? Because we had better benefits and we wasn't requiring them to pay your guys' absorbent salaries? You talk about CEOs that are making all this money? And what do you make, Mr. O'Brien? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, Senator. I know what you make because in 2019, your salary was, um, what is this? Hundred ninety three thousand. I'm sure you got some pay raises since then. Yeah, when I was a and the average UPS driver, the feeder driver makes thirty five thousand a year. That's and what do you bring? That's to the inaccurate. Table? Hold on a second. That's inaccurate. State no, facts. I've got it right here. State facts. That's inaccurate. The average UPS feeder driver makes thirty five thousand. If you don't know your facts, then maybe you should. Oh, I, be I know him because I negotiate the contract. So I say, I say one thing to you. What do you bring for that salary? What do I bring? Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what job have you committed or have you, have you uh, uh, started? What job have you created? One job other than sucking the paycheck out of some other body, somebody else that you want to say that you're trying to provide because you're forcing them to pay dues? And no, then, we don't force them. Senator, you've asked the you're question. You're out of line. Actually, I have question. been. And don't tell me I'm out of line. You are in line. Don't tell me I'm out of line. Well, you, you, you frame, don't tell me. You I'm frame, making a you frame, you frame Third, the statement. You frame the statement. You shut your mouth yeah. because you don't know you're what you're talking about. You're going to tell me to shut my mouth? Yes, yeah. I did. Hold it. Hold it. Tough guy. I'm not afraid of physical. Senator, hold it. But don't sit there and tell me I'm out of line. Senator. You made a statement. You asked the question. I didn't ask the question. You did it. You did. I answered question. the question. You asked the question. About how well, it was money rhetorical. You let him answer. It was, rhetor it was a let, rhetorical Well, question. you may think it's rhetorical. It sounded was rhetorical. to me like a question. Let him answer the question. I'm not yielding my time to him. So if you're going to let me keep my time, that's fine. You'll have your time. Let him. You ask Here's a question. question. He has so, a right to answer that. So after seeing Mullen's demeanor, you can understand why O'Brien made those tweets about him being a tough guy. I'm not afraid of physical confrontation. Sir, you're an adult. Act like it. 
I mean, the animosity, it stems from Mark Wayne Mullen being vehemently anti-union, and that's not necessarily surprising considering he is literally a greedy CEO himself. He's worth an estimated $75 million and has defended billionaire CEOs like Howard Schultz of Starbucks, who was caught retaliating against employees trying to unionize. So as a CEO himself, he knows that unions threaten his wealth or did threaten his wealth when he was a CEO because they give workers more leverage. And that's bad for people who are greedy like Mark Wayne Mullen. Now, O'Brien pointed this out at the last hearing. And in response, Mullen was apoplectic. My salary, if you follow me around, I walk, I actually look at this building. I bet you I work more hours than you do. Twice that's, as many that's hours. That's impossible. But no, that is, that's true. Sir, you don't secondly, know what hard work is. Secondly, if you want to follow yeah. my schedule, be, secondly, be, I'll do it in a follow. minute. Secondly, UPS feeder drivers, and you can quote uh, Carol Tomei, who quoted this, they make 93000 on the lower end. Some I of them making 150000 I said feeder drivers. Feeder drivers, tractor trail drivers. Some of them making $150,000 per year. Some of them do. And I don't disagree with that. Most of them make over, four, most of them after you've been there four years. Most of them make over 1000 uh, Okay. Most of them make over $100,000 So reclaiming my time, I go back to the whole fact that, sir, you haven't created a job. We haven't? You haven't been there. You haven't. Sure we have. You haven't. Sure we have. Tell me one job that you created. What are, what are you talking about? Be specific. You're like, an employer? You no, we're not an employer. people? No, but, you know, it's funny. No, no, we, then we hold create, on. Then, that, we create that's opportunity. not creating jobs. We create opportunity because we Sir, hold, that's, that's we not, hold greedy CEOs like yourself not, accountable. You call me a greedy CEO. Oh, yeah, you are. You want to attack my salary, I'll attack yours. You're, what did ahead. you make? What did you make when you owned your company? When I made my company, I kept my salary down at about uh, 50000 a year because I invested every penny into it. Okay. All right. You mean you hid money? No, I didn't hide. Oh, oh. hold on a second. Okay, call He said that's out of line. You said right, I was out of line. We're even. We're, even. Made, made, we're not even. We're not even close to being even. You I think know. it's smart? You think you're funny? No, you're you, not. You think you're funny? No, I never said. I, did I smile? You frame. You frame your opening. Hold statement. on, hold on. Let's. Uh, you frame your opening right. statement, no, saying you're a senator. Tough guy. Continue, this, uh, this, senator. Please this continue is your behavior, statements. But, sir, this is, I, think, I think it's great that you're doing this because Me too. this shows their behavior on how they try to come in and no, organize I, I, a shop. No, no, it's and just, they say about intimidation, and it's not about intimidation. This, it's they show the your behavior. Yeah, but stay on the issue. So that's the origin of this beef. Now, I'm assuming that Mark Wayne Mullen isn't still licking his wounds from that because he's mad that he was called a greedy CEO. He's probably still mad because this exchange led to a lot of scrutiny on Mark Wayne Mullen for being a greedy CEO. He wasn't just called the mean name. He was exposed as well because first and foremost, he was lying about his income. As Common Dreams explains, asked by O'Brien how much he made from his plumbing business, Mullen claimed, I kept my salary down at about 50000 thousand dollars a year because i invested every penny into it but in 2013 then representative mullen reportedly pocketed more than six hundred thousand dollars from companies in violation of house ethics rules and federal laws limiting how much outside income members of congress are allowed to receive although mullen transferred ownership of the companies to his family he continued to serve as a board member and chief advertiser while raking in hundreds of thousands of dollars now second of all as sean o'brien pointed out on march 8th after their last exchange. For the record, Senator Mullen saw his reported assets balloon from a range of $7.3 million to $29.9 million at the end of 2020 to a range of $31.6 million to $75.6 million dollars now ask yourself do you think that mark wayne mullen shared that wealth with his employees who helped him build his plumbing company and make it as successful as it was do you think he cut them a check after he sold the company i mean of course not as evidenced by his wealth doubling now he is the definition of a greedy ceo that's what that is and he doesn't like that o'brien called him on that he doesn't like that he is being perceived as part of the problem. He wants to make it seem as if unions are the problem, but his greed makes people want to join unions so that way they have protections from their greedy bosses who suck up all of the profits and leech off of their employees. But that's not the extent of his greed. He's not just a greedy CEO. He also has a fuck you, I got mine mentality because after his $1.4 million PPP loan was forgiven, he had the audacity to come out against $10,000 debt forgiveness for people with student loans. So when it comes to whether or not taxpayers should uh, pay for his PPP loan to be forgiven, well, that's fine. But when it comes to student debt, not acceptable. He is a genuine piece of shit. And he's also a hypocrite because Right Wing Watch pointed out that he said this about his own religious teaching. A lot of times when I speak, I also speak about my heart too. 
something I've had to change about loving the people, love the call. You guys, many of you guys have heard me say that. And a lot of times I talk about that because I, I choose my attitude. There's a lot of times we can get angry about politics. We can get mad at someone. I heard someone back here a while ago when I was talking saying baloney. Because we get passionate about it. But, the Lord still calls us to love. And so even if you disagree with me, I still love you. I still, I still respect you. Or, I don't care about respecting you at all. I, respect I don't respect you, I respect you at all. Well, I, for one, am completely shocked by this. You know, usually fundamentalist Christians are completely consistent about loving their neighbor and not judging others or hating others. So, I mean, this is really out of character here for an evangelical. Listen, he is a clown. And since that exchange that took place today, he's had a couple of hours to cool off. So what is he saying now? Is he toning it down? Is he apologizing? Well, as CNN's Manu Raja reports, he has no regrets. He called me out. I was just answering the call. Don't say something. You're not going to back up. It's that simple, Mullen said. He's a president of a union. I'm still a guy from Oklahoma. You're a millionaire from Oklahoma, dude. Mullen said he was raised different when asked about the propriety of settling disputes physically. Don't say something stupid like that unless you're going to truly back it up, Mullen told us. He's a thug. He's been running at the mouth forever. Mullen did say he considers it a done deal and he's willing to get a coffee with the witness. And he pushed back at Senator Bernie Sanders admonishing him at the hearing. I'd hate to be that guy some days, Mullen said of Sanders. So it's over. It's a done deal, as he says, which makes sense because you can only humiliate yourself so much before realizing it's time to shut the fuck up before I look any more foolish than I already do. Now, as Ali Mastal put it, Republicans are an entire party that never learned to use their words and truer words have never been spoken. And it's not only true because of Mullen's behavior today, but because of another altercation that allegedly got physical with the Republican because NPR correspondent Claudia Grizel reports have never seen this on Capitol Hill. While talking to Representative Tim Burchett after the GOP conference meeting, former Speaker McCarthy walked by his detail and McCarthy shoved Burchett. Burchett lunged towards me. I thought it was a joke. It was not. And a chase ensued. Now we're going to hear from Tim Burchett in a moment who's going to recount the event and tell us about the chase that ensued afterwards. But just for some additional context, Tim Burchett is one of the eight Republicans who voted to oust McCarthy. So I think that says a lot. But nonetheless, here's what he had to say. And at that time, I uh, got elbowed in the back and it kind of caught me off guard because it was a clean shot to the kidneys. And I turned back and there was there was Kevin. And um, and I, I, for a minute, I was kind of, what the heck just happened? And then I, um, you know, I, I chased after him, of course. He's a, as I've stated many times, he's a He's a bully with $17 million in a security detail. You know, he's the type of guy that when you're a kid would throw a rock over the fence and run home and hide behind his mama's skirt. And he just, you know, he, he uh, from behind, that kind of stuff. It, you know, that's not the way we handle things in East Tennessee. We, we, if we have a problem with somebody, I'm going to look him in the eye and, and talk to him. Okay, so he walked down the hallway, hit you in his el with his elbow. Yeah, you, and you, can, you can go on Claudia's. Twitter account, it, it, it pretty much, um, or X account, it, right. it, it's, it's very accurate. But, okay, so then just explain, so you chased him? What, what do you mean you chased well, him? I just ran after him, I was like, what the heck, you know, why'd you do that? You know, because it was, uh, like I said, it, if you've ever been hit in the kidneys, it's a little little different, you don't have to hit very hard to cause a little bit of pain, a lot of pain, and and so I, and he just, of course, um, as he always did, does, he just uh, denies it, or I, uh, blame somebody else or something, you know, and it was just a little heated, but I just backed off because there wasn't any, I saw no reason. I wasn't gaining anything from it. Wait, and then so everybody saw it, so it didn't really matter. Like he responded to you? Yeah, yeah, he just acted like, you know, what are you talking about? You know, who are you to, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just, you know, I think that's that's symptomatic of the problems that he, he's had in his short tenure as speaker and were you face to face when you had this interaction yeah, yeah but there's security detail and i get it they had they were doing their job so it wasn't exactly like he didn't he wouldn't turn around and face me he he kept scurrying and trying to keep people between me and him and then so and did, where did he, were you, yell, were you i just let it go at that point it wasn't were you yelling? Uh, he, he was yeah i raised my voice to him i thought it was appropriate and you know, i just don't expect a guy who was at one time three steps away from the White House to sucker su hit you with a sucker punch in the, in the in the hallway. And did he raise his voice back to you? Yeah, just that high pitched 
kind of thing, I, I believe, and that was about it. And did he walk into his office? How did this happen? No, he just kept on walking down the hall. I don't know where his office is now. Hmm. And, um, and you know, he had the, his detail and his posse, so to speak, was with him. So did his detail try to stop you? Do what? Did his detail try well, to stop you? The detail kind of got... They, they, one guy got got between us there towards the end, but it, it, I wasn't I wasn't looking to knock him out or anything. I just wanted to let him know I I, I, I know it was him. I mean, this is middle school level bully shit. It's just so ridiculous that the former speaker of the house is behaving in this way, and I, I believe Burchett here. So McCarthy allegedly shoved a fellow Republican, presumably in retaliation for his vote to oust him as speaker, more than a month after that happened. So McCarthy is still holding a grudge and presumably isn't going to let it go anytime soon. Now, as Burchett stated when he confronted McCarthy, he denied that it happened. Now, predictably, when McCarthy spoke to reporters, he also denied it, but you can just see it in his face that he is completely full of shit. I hit him in a kidney. HC5, you're all down there, right? Not a very big hallway. So I'm walking out. You could talk to Bruce Westerman, because I actually called him after you guys reported something. I said, did I hit somebody? Bruce Westerman and I were walking out, and I guess a reporter was interviewing Burchard or something. I guess our shoulders hit, because Burchard runs up to me after. I didn't know what he was talking about. Some reporters asked me. I did not run and hit the guy. I did not kidney punch him. I did not shoot anything like that. You didn't shove him. No. I, we're walking through. You, you were at HC5, right? You guys line up along the way there. It was Bruce Wester and I walking out. He must have been interviewing someone. I didn't know it was him or something. I guess our elbows hit as I walked by. I didn't punch anybody. Did he but, 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 no. but, Yeah, well, he, I guess it happened because when I was walking back further, I don't say somebody was interviewing me or talking to me, and he comes running up like, why, why, why did you hit me or something like that. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't even know something transpired. But reporters or witnesses said it looked like you, yeah. there was plenty of room for you to walk and that you intentionally hit him. There is, okay, not a place. Show me a reporter who saw that. Ask, call Bruce Gonzalez Westerman. Couple okay, well, ask Bruce that. Westerman. No, I did not go up. If I hit, if I would hit somebody, they would know I hit him. He said he knew he hit him. He said he was in pain that you hit him oh, so hard. come on now. That's what he said. That, that's awful. Matt well, Gaetz has put a... Congressman Gaetz is singer wrote that you pushed him twice while he was in Congress in the chamber. When have I pushed him? Matt Kinzinger said he was in the back railing once and you elbowed him and pushed you him. You said Gaetz. Kinzinger. 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 Oh, no, I don't know, I don't know about Kinzinger. Can Congressman you... Gates, though, is filing or uh, committing, submitting a complaint to the Ethics Committee oh, over this, this issue. Do you have any response to Congressman Gates? No, I, I think ethics is a good place for Gates to be. <laughs> so, I mean, Burchett said that you're the kind of guy, this is his words, as a kid, would throw a rock and then go hide under his mom's skirt. That was his exact words. What's your response? That's not who I am. Yeah, I just don't believe him at all. And the problem is that reporters witness this too. So it's not just Burchett's words against McCarthy's, it's the word of Burchett and reporters against a notorious liar like McCarthy's. And to make matters worse, this is not the first time that he's been accused of this because they referenced Kinzinger's accusations as well. And he detailed this in his book, detailed how he was shoved not once, but twice by McCarthy allegedly. So this was shared on Twitter by Manu Raju of CNN. And in his book, Kinzinger alleges, quote, once I was standing in the aisle that runs from the floor to the back of the chamber. As McCarthy passed with his security man and some of his boys, he veered towards me, hit me with his shoulder, and then kept going. Now, he later adds, another time I was standing at the rail that curves around the back end of the last row of seats in the chamber as he shoulder checked me again. I thought to myself, what a child. Now, if you want to read the full passage, Kinzinger explains that he was previously one of the boys. He was part of the Cool Kids Club, but then became an outcast after he condemned Donald Trump, which is when he says McCarthy decided to start physically assaulting him, shoving him. So, yeah, this is kind of what McCarthy does. It's his M.O., and the only reason why he probably hasn't shoulder-checked Gates yet is because Gates has a much bigger mouth and would likely tattle on McCarthy to Daddy Trump. But you know he wants to. Now, the reason why Republicans are violent and they're unable to use their words, as Ellie Mastal put it, is because they have the emotional maturity of toddlers, and sometimes they're unable to contain their emotions, and it just spills over into the public— and they look like babies shitting their pants. So I fully expect this to keep happening, and I admittedly kind of want it to happen more, especially when it comes to Republicans 
shoulder checking each other, trying to use my words very carefully here on YouTube so I don't violate the TOS because these people are dickheads and I want to see these dickheads duke it out. So I say, if they want to fuck around, let them find out. But that's just me. Were you acting like a beta, 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 beta. Alpha male, not a beta male.